Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today we will be working on a Unikite and Autumn Jasper knotted necklace with handmade art beads. I just love this piece and I love the way these beautiful handmade beads fit into it. So let's gather up our supplies and get started. Now first up on the list from the Bargain Bead Box for August will be this Unikite Faceted Hexagon Pendant. If I can get it out of the sack. Here we go. Now isn't that beautiful? And you know what's lovely about this pendant besides having the hole already drilled in it? Is that it's as beautiful on one side as it is the other. So if you're wanting to make a bold statement, use one side. If you wanted to make not so bold a statement, use the other. They're both gorgeous. Also from the bargain bead box, we will be using use them <laughs> using this autumn jasper pebble beads. Now aren't those beautiful? They're so unique. I have never seen a bead like this. Pebble beads. I really, really like the look of these beads. And to go along with these beautiful pebble beads, we will be using the 6mm Autumn Jasper Round Beads. Aren't those gorgeous? I love the way the Unikite and the Autumn Jasper just complement each other in this series. And it is going to make a beautiful necklace. Did I tell you in my last project I am ready for autumn? I am ready for autumn. We had some rain here last night and we've gone to 110 to 96 today. And I'm rooting for autumn to come on in. Now from my own stash, I have pulled the champagne beautiful bicones. I wanted to add just a bit of bling to this necklace and these champagne bicones will match perfectly with the pieces we pulled from the August Bargain Bead Box. One of the things to notice when you're working with bicones is at first glance they look like they're equally pointed. But if you really examine your bicones, there is a long end and a shorter end. So when you're stringing your bicones, you want to make sure that you get short ends going the same direction or long ends going the same direction. And now from my stash again, these are rhinestone rondelles in the gold tone. These run about six millimeters and they are going to add that extra bling to it. And this here are also spacers that I got, I think, from the last Bargain Bead Box and didn't use them all. And I want to add just a little more gold to this necklace. So I pulled these spacers out that have now gone into my stash and that is what I will be using for this necklace. So, I've also pulled to add just that little bit of gold to this necklace my three millimeter round spacer balls. You know, I get these in a set with a bunch of colors off of Amazon and I love these little round spacer balls. I think I use them in almost everything. And then I have pulled, this is called the Magic Apple. They are eight millimeter seed beads. And then to add something a little extra to this piece, I pulled out the barrel beads that I made back in early winter, probably January, February. Aren't these beautiful? These art beads are made from polymer clay 
and I just love them. If you're interested in knowing how I do these, let me know in the comments. It, it takes a while to do these because there's several steps to them, but I really love the look of these little art beads. And I would say, if I had to guess, because I'm sorry I didn't measure them, they're between 12 and 14 millimeters. But when you add the other ends, they're perfect. And from my stash, we've used this beading card before. This is a nylon beading card in a 0.5 millimeter. I could not decide what color I wanted because I wanted to stay in that warm autumn the colors of autumn and so brown seemed to be the most neutral now when we take this cord I'm unrolling quite a bit of it we're going to be tying knots and I want my necklace the finished product to run about 28 inches so I'm going to take from my breastbone and holding the end I'm going to extend my arm then I'm going to grab it from the breastbone and extend my arm again. This will give me leftover, but it's better to have too much than too little. Now, once you get this through your, um, I'm sorry, once you get this cut, you're going to need to burn the ends to make this little long straight piece on it. This will act like your needle. Now, a lot of people I've seen, they like to suck her up, they pull it with their fingers, and they have no problem. But because my hands are real sensitive from a condition I have, I can't really do that. But where there's a will, there's always a workaround. So I take my glass, I light it, the little end of the cord, and I immediately put it down on that glass and gently pull. The melted nylon, because you're doing it on cold, cool glass, will immediately cool and allow you to pull that out to make a needle. So let's begin with our pendant. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put one end of our beading cord through the hole in that pendant. And then we're going to bring the two ends of the cord all the way to the top so that they meet. The two ends meet. Now why do you want to do this? I know a lot of people that bead down one side, put on their pendant and bead up the other side, but I find for me it's easier if I lay it flat and bead one side, one side, then go back and bead and bead so that everything is even. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put, actually I believe I started out putting four or five of these 80 seed beads onto one side and then 80 seed beads onto the other side and pull them down to the pendant. I was concerned about how much I would need to go around the top of that pendant so there wasn't a gap. I actually ended up with too many and backed off until I just had three on each side. I love these little magic apple seed beads. I've used them in bracelets before and where I picked them up and um, I think they called them candy apples then. But this is magic apples where I got the last batch. They have greens and reds and golds and sometimes just a little hint of brown. And they're beautiful, but you know, there are so many colors in that Unikite and Jasper for Autumn. You could use just about any color to enhance this bell we're making for this seed bead. I mean, for this uh, Unikite pendant. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit so you don't have to see me stick these things on the other side. I tell you what, when I'm working with seed beads and I'm really concentrating, I'm going really, really fast. But whenever I put this up so that I can edit it, I think, oh my goodness, I am as slow as molasses. But if you look right here, you can tell that four was just too many. So I, because I'm using those 8 and they're fairly large beads, 
So I'm going to take one off on each side and that should give me enough to go around the top of this pendant and tie the knot. So let me tell you the secret of tying this knot. If you tie your knot where it goes across the pendant, it will hang really strange. Do you see how I've tied it right there? I'm going to move that around and pull that where it's going horizontal across the pendant. And the reason I do that, if your knot is going that direction, when you put this necklace on, it's going to lay on the front or lay on the back, depending on which direction you put it on. But if you don't move that cord where it is going horizontal instead of across the top of the pendant, it will it will spin on you and that's just not a good look for anybody. So now that I've done that and I'm trying to show you that I've done that where they're coming out on both sides. See how that goes on both sides? Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to go ahead and finish this bell up. Now I'm going to take one of the corrugated rondelles. I, again, they're a bargain bead box. They may still be on the site. I'm not sure because they were last month. And I'm going to put that right on the top of this bell. And I have to get both, both of the cords and my little needles, pretend needles, don't want to go both in. But you know what I discovered? I had picked up one at first that had a little hang on it and I didn't notice it. And so I changed it and I'm going to bring that right down and doing the same technique with the knot. I'm going to tie it where it goes across the pendant as opposed to up and down the pendant. And I'll tell you now, I had to go fix dinner and we have just finished dinner and I am back at doing this, but the sun is coming in through my bay window so all those little click click things are going naughty to nothing. So. After you've tied your knot, we're going to go ahead and do an overhand loop knot. You make the circle and pinch your forefinger and your thumb, then moving your thread or your cord back behind through the loop, then you cinch it down up against the rondelle that you have put on there, rondelle spacer. And now that we have that little knot on both sides of our necklace, we're going to begin our components. The first component I'm laying out right here. Let's see if my hands will get out of the way so you can see it. Okay, so for our first component, we're going to need uh, oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean to put that in there. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, we're going to need our bicone, the autumn jasper, a rondelle, a pebble, a rondelle, the autumn jasper, and a bicone. So I really, really do love the champagne uh, bicones. Now, for this, what I'm trying to show you is that there's a short side and a long side. Decide which one of these you want to be up against the beads you're putting on. I wanted my long side to be against the bead, so I put the short side on first. Then I'm going to add my Autumn Jasper and that corrugated rondelle spacer. I really love those. I was so glad I had some of those left over. Then I'm going to do the pebble, and I think this is just gorgeous. I'm amazed at how much they match with the pendant that we have done. And another rondelle corrugated spacer, and our autumn jasper, and then another bicone. Now I have to tell you, I have a spatial issue sometimes, and so I'm going, okay, I wanted 
the long side to touch the beads and if you look and the sh long side on the other side to touch the beads so it was the short side I had it up against it so I'm having to turn it around and put it on the other way so now if you look at it you have long side and long side and again we're going to make a loop holding it with our forefinger and thumb then we're going to go around the back and through that loop and then it's a push pull motion if you're doing it with your hand and you're pushing forward with your forefinger and thumb and you're pulling with your back ones if you crochet you know what I'm talking about and it will just cinch it right up against there uh, I believe it's the next one I'll show you how to use a bead because the beads are awesome whenever you're doing this on these small 0.5 millimeter beading cords now I'm going to the other side We've already put on our first knot. I'm checking to see if my bicone is facing the correct way. And then I'll add a bicone. I'm checking it out. And then I will put on my autumn jasper. There you go. Oh, come on, hit that little hole. <laughs> You know what the problem is? I have misplaced my magnifiers and what well, by the time I could find the hole, I thought I was never going to get it. But anyway, so then we have a nice big hole in that rondelle spacer. And then I'm going to put on one of our pebbles. Now I try to match the pebbles with each other and if you'll notice if you have pebbles the holes don't always go right in the center and so you just have to be okay with the fact that it's not always going to be right in the middle. Then we're going to put on another rondelle and our autumn jasper. I think this is one of the prettiest green little beads I have ever seen. Yeah, I always forget how small six millimeters look, but this just has a bigness about it with these colors. And then again, making sure that your bicone is facing the way you want it to go. And you do have options. You can do uh, long to long going towards the bead, short to short, or you can do them where they're pointing like arrows and going in one direction. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our loop. And so when you do this loop, hold it with your forefinger and your thumb, bring the cord through the back, and then we're going to cinch it. And it's very important that you go really slow when you're doing the cinching because you want to be able to pull with your back fingers and push with your front two fingers till you get that knot right up against your components. And this is what it looks like, the first two components. It's so much easier if you do side to side. Now whenever I'm measuring for the next knot, I'm going to make sure that I get it in the same place on both sides before I start putting on my beads. A good secret for me is that I use the width of the pinch between my forefinger and thumb in order to get them close enough. Now some necklaces like the chip necklaces I've already done, I'm waiting to get photographed to get in, I go longer than just the width of my forefinger and thumb. But for this one, a good width for me, because I really want to show off these beads, is a, the width of my forefinger and thumb. And there you have it. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing when I put the knot on the next side. So let's get that there. And a really good uh, habit to get into is before you cinch that second knot down is to make sure 
that your knots are lining up with each other. And it's very easy for it to just kind of wiggle out from between your fingers and get it in the wrong space. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm, I'm checking this knot and the other knot to try to get them right in the same place. Now, if you're making a topsy-turvy necklace and you just want the beads randomly spaced, it's not a big deal on the spacing. But for something like this, or for the chip necklaces I still have to get photographed, I wanted my each side of the necklace to match each other. And so it was very important that I got the knots in the correct space. That's why I started doing my pendant first and then building the necklace out on both sides. If you've watched some of my other videos, when I wanted to get this effect, I would do the whole side and then I would lay it on the table and do the other side, trying to get the knots in the same place. And I just find this so much easier. Okay, so now we're ready to start our next component. Now for this component, I will be using the three millimeter spacer balls. And then I'm going to use my Rondell uh, spacers. I'm sorry, my, yes, that's it. My Rondell spacers, <laughs> I had a brain lapse. And then these lovely art beads. Now I have to tell you, I had so much fun making these art beads. And I thought, well, I'll just take them out and I'll look at them every now and then. But when I ran across them, whenever I was pulling things for this necklace, I went, that will be perfect. So for this section, I'm going to put on my three millimeter spacer ball, my rhinestone rondelle, my art bead, my rhinestone rondelle, and a spacer ball. And then I'm going to repeat bringing this down to the knot that's one of the reasons I use the three millimeter is with this small cord I want to make sure nothing goes through any large holes isn't that barrel bead beautiful I just love it um, but anyway so we're gonna make the loop and we're going to bring the thread through just like that, I didn't really make another loop. I just didn't want to have to find the end. And then we're going to cinch this down. So right about here is where I got tired of showing you how to do it if you didn't want to use a bead. And I'm going to get another six millimeter bead. It doesn't really matter what bead you use just as long as you can tell it from the things that you're putting on the necklace. And I'm bringing this bead down till I hit my knot. Then I'm gonna butt it up against that knot and I'm going to hold with one hand and I'm gonna pull really tight. And there it is. So as we're clipping along here at a breathtaking pace, would you take a moment and please like and leave a comment for this video? And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you so much. I think sometimes I talk too fast for my microphone to pick it all up. Now that's crazy. All right, a three millimeter spacer bead, your rhinestone rondelle, your art bead. Now it I know you won't have these art beads, but any bead that is about this size, you can go ahead and put on in place of these art beads. And like I said, if you're ever interested in knowing how I made these art beads, if you would like, uh, like me to do a small, just a glimpse on it, I will be happy to. Just leave a comment. There's enough comments, I'll be happy to make one. All right, so I had to change out the beads because that hole didn't get all the way through. 
But after you've put on your art bead or any 10 or 12 millimeter bead or whatever bead you want, um, size bead you want, then go ahead and put on your rhinestone rondelle spacer and then your three millimeter spacer ball. I love the look of the gold that go through these components. So in component number two, again, it's a spacer ball, a rondelle spacer, your art bead, spacer, and ball. And now we're making our loop and we're going to put the thread through the back and I'm going to, blah, and I'm going to begin <laughs> to move that towards this component. But then I will go ahead and put on the little six millimeter uh, bead that I chose to help with these knots. I would not go any smaller than six millimeter because then you take the chance of it not being big enough to really press into the beads that you're using. I normally use either a six or an eight millimeter when I'm doing this. So I'm moving it down and do you see my, my uh, loop there. I'm going to hold on to that component so that it doesn't get away from me and I'm going to start moving that loop down and then I'll hold it and I'm pulling with the hand that had moved it down and then I looked at it and it needed a little tug so I tugged with the other one. But it really does move that knot as long as you have it close to the component you're making it will cinch it right up. All right, now it's time for us to make our next knot. So again, I'm doing a, a thumb and forefinger width between my components. And to do these knots, I don't have to use the ball because there's nothing to cinch it up to unless it's my fingers. And then once I get it pulled tight, I'll go over and I'll do the next one. And so we're going to make the loop. We're going to go behind it. Then I'm going to put my fingers exactly where I want that loop to come. And I'm going to push pull till I get it to touch my thumb and forefinger on the other hand. And then you have your loops in the right place. Now I do not finish sensing pulling, I have tongue tie right now, uh, that loop down until I have checked because if you leave a little bit of give on it, you can either push it towards the component if you have too much room or pull it away from the component if you need a little bit more space. That's a good tip. Took me a long time to realize that. I picked out a lot of knots with little pins. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to repeat our first component. And that first component, again, will be your bicone, then your autumn jasper, your corrugated rondelle spacer, your pebble, your rondelle spacer, your autumn jasper, and your bicone. Be sure that you check to see, are you putting the long end or the short end on your cord first? What do you want to look for that's going to go up against the knot? Now, eventually after doing most of this necklace, I realized all for me and the design I was using, always put what I call the butt, the little short end, on the thread first, on that cord first, so that it will butt up against the knot, because that's the way I wanted it to look. And once I do, once I get my bicone on, then I'll go ahead and put on my autumn jasper, my uh, ro corrugated rondelle spacer. I probably won't say that again. That's a tongue twister. My pebble of Jasper and then my Rondale Spacer, 
my autumn jasper and then making sure that if my back side went on first then this time my long side is going on first so that both long sides will point in towards my component and there you have it now it is time for us to make our loop and just like all the other times once I press those beads down I'm going to make a loop if any of you've ever made a knot for sewing it's that loop you do before you wind it down your finger an overhand loop and then you're going to put your cord through the back and you're going to begin to move that knot towards your component and once you get it close enough and I'm I think I'm going to move it just a little further down yes there's a space where I like to either have it if you get it too close it eats your three millimeter and you have to pick it out if you don't get it close enough it will cinch it down too far away so I'm bringing my little cincher bead up there and I'm going to hold on and make sure those beads are all together I'm going to push it down as I pull the cord which is the same thing your fingers are doing it's that push-pull motion and that's done so my next thing that I will do is go ahead and make the knot I'm sorry I've already made the knot I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the opposite side now at this point I'm going to speed it up because I was crazy whenever I was filming this and when I downloaded all these even before I got pictures in I had 56 minutes worth of video and I don't know about you but when I see a video that's 56 minutes long I have a tendency to fast forward in little spurts watching to see what they've done so let me speed this up for your sake and for mine just a second now as this is speeding right along I want to tell you that I use a free program and I've used it for years but I'd never sped anything up till I started making these videos and I have to tell you I do not like the way it looks jerky whenever you're using it but other than that it's a great program and I love all the features it has now you might be wondering how I got started making these necklaces I had seen a little bit about knotted necklaces but had never really seen anything like this then at the beginning of this year my daughter came to me after the Christmas season and said mom I have some leftover beads can I go through your stash and see what you have I said sure use whatever you want well she took some cord and some more beads to add to hers and she started making these wonderful just marvelous tied knotted necklaces and I said oh I would like one of those and nothing came so after a few days I said again I would like one of those and after a few minutes she said let me teach you how to do this bomb and that's how I fell in love with these necklaces this is how the piece looks I just love it I love the way the Jasper in the two different styles and the art beads play against each other I think it really sets this necklace off so what I have done once I finished it I measured the necklace to see how long it was one of my pet peeves and it's just me I don't want my beautiful beads to be hid behind my hair 
So I always add enough length, which would be three inches here, because this ended up being 24, and I went ahead and decided to make it 30. I add, a, well, it wasn't three inches, I guess it was about two and a half, because I'm gonna add some little stopper beads, but I tied my knot so that I would have an area behind my hair that didn't have beads. And so that's what I'm doing here. This is one of those times when I said, I don't always use the length of the forefinger in the thumb, but it's so important to get these in about the same place. So I'm measuring them up against each other and using my fingers to cinch this knot down I am going to do some stopper beads then for this last little section and that will make the rest of my three inches. So moving right along, once I get this knot about in the same spot, what will I use for my stopper beads? I say stopper beads because I really don't like to just have a clamshell hang out all by itself. What I will do for this is I will put on a three millimeter uh, spacer ball and then I will put on two of the seed beads and then I will go ahead and put on one of those uh, autumn jasper beads. I have quite a few of them left and they are so lovely. So that's what I'm going to make at the end of my necklace in case I ever decide to wear my hair up which in my whole life I think that's happened once. Then I'm going to go ahead and put on two more of the um, seed beads in the 8-0 and then I'm going to put on my three millimeter spacer bead. Now if you've watched any of my other uh, videos you'll know that I really like to have something up against my clamshell. I really hate having them hang out all by themselves at the end of a cord. Whether it's a beading cord or a beading wire or, um, oh let's see, I used fishing line the other day and it really bothered me. So now I am cinching up the beads I just put on there just like we did the other components. Isn't that lovely? And so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side so that we can put both clamshells on at the same time. Just a quick note, this piece will be up in the shop when this video goes up. You can find it at circleartdesigns.square Dot so if you're making this piece for yourself with the same beads only substituting something else for the art beads and you would like please put pictures up I would love to see what you have done that would be amazing I actually got my first comment today that someone was going to make one of my pieces with the beads that she had. I hope she puts a picture up. That I think would be truly awesome. So I have finished up the stopper bead area for the each side of the necklace and I'm ready to move on to putting on the clamshell. Now I have to tell you I'm afraid my arm will get in the way because I have to keep reaching over. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. But if you'll notice, I have picked some gold tube beads for this one. And they're in the number two, they're Beadalon gold tube beads. And I'm going to use the gold clamshells. Now you won't really see these two beads, but because I'm selling this piece, I really want them to match for whoever buys it so that they know they're in there even if they can't see them. So there's a little hole on the back of the clamshell and you put your beading cord through it and the back 
is where the clamshell comes together. And that cord will go through to the where the clamshell opens up if you were going to have clams for dinner. Then I put on my crimp. Now, you want a crimp that is big enough that when you mash it down with your chain nose pliers, it will be wider than the hole at the back of your clamshell. Now, if you're using tube, and I highly recommend you use tubes for tube crimps for this because of the length, make sure you go up and down the whole tube to get it really mashed down. Now, as I take my pliers and go up and down this tube, I really am making sure that this is really tight, both on the bottom and the top because this is what is going to hold that cord into your clamshell. Once that is done, I'm going to use some super glue. This is Loctite Super Glue Gel. It dries a little slower. And these are plastic cots that I put on my fingers. About a year, year and a half ago, I had a very severe reaction to UV resin and super glue. So I always wear something on whatever's going to touch the super glue or the UV resin. I thought, you know, I've done this for years, I've never had an issue, but when I did, it was awful. So if you're not using protection, I highly suggest you do. So, as I am Finishing this up, I'm going to use that super glue and I will put a dot on the top of the crimp and on the bottom of the crimp. Then I will take the super glue and put a dot on one side inside the clamshell and then on the other side. And then I will take my chain nose pliers and close them up. Oh, did you see me glue my cots together? Oh dear. And once I have got that glued together where the, the little circles at the top are matched up, I'll hold it for just a minute so that it will begin to dry. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take and put that uh, beading cord right through the back of your clamshell, put it down to the bead, put on the crimp, take my chain nose pliers, and then mashing the crimp down all the way up and down that tube so that it is wider than the circle at the bottom. Once I've done that, I will cut off the excess cord and it'll show you that in just a minute. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the glue. I want to make sure the cord is glued onto the crimp at the top and the bottom, and the crimp is glued into the clamshell when I close it. Because these beads are a really heavy necklace, a beautiful one, but Jasper and Unikite is heavy. <laughs> so I want to make sure this little clamshell is going to hold. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this beading adventure. I hope you have had a wonderful time. In fact, I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoy making it for you to watch. <laughs> because I really love sharing what I love to do. If you notice there, I was trying real hard not to glue my cots back together. But back to what I was saying. I hope you have a wonderful beading adventure of your own. Take time to look in your stash and see what you have that you could make one of these beautiful autumn necklaces. The techniques will work no matter the color, no matter the shape of the beads. And this will be a wonderful piece to add to your collection. 
Now, as I said, to finish this up, we're going to take a uh, little four millimeter jump ring, and then I have a five millimeter jump ring. The four millimeter I'm going to use to put my clasp on. The, I'm using a lobster claw clasp. Twist that between two chain nose pliers so that you open only one side. Never pull this apart. Jump rings are kind of le like clay if you've ever worked with it. If you're taking a piece out of a mold and you bend that piece, even if you put it back together, clay has memory. And when you fire that piece, most of the time, it will remember when you bent it. And that piece will come out of your kiln warped. Jump rings are the same way. If you take and you pull that jump ring apart, as opposed to gently twisting one wrist to open it, you're giving that jump ring a memory. And even if by some chance you get that jump ring shaped back together in an ascent, uh, circle, kind of a circle, and you get the two ends to meet, when you least expect it, that jump ring, which now has a weak spot in it, just like the clay does, will remember when you pulled it apart. And it will never be as strong as it would have been if you'd taken the time to hold it between two chain nose pliers and twist one wrist slightly to open it. Put what you're going to put on it and then twist it back together making sure it's closed. And we see that right here. I twisted one side. I'm putting it between both circles on the clamshell. And then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to twist it back together. And that, when it's closed, is your finished piece. This necklace will be up in the shop at circleartdesigns.square.site. I will leave the link in the description box below. Look around in your own stash. Make a wonderful necklace of your own and have an amazing beading adventure this week. Katherine, circleartdesigns.square.site